All right, I think we're all good now. Um, it says I can't share. Yeah, I see some, um, I see some people joining. Thanks for joining early. We will get started at exactly 11 o'clock. We're just gonna be doing a little bit of tech testing before then. Okay, can you share now? Cool. Yep, I can, thanks. I'm just going to test the chat. And for those that are joining early, if you want to let us know what state or city you're joining from in the chat, go ahead. We would love to see where you're joining us from. Oh, I see. Okay, so there's um, a chat section and then there's a Q and A. Um, will oh, chat is disabled. All right, All right let's see here. Thank you for letting me know. There we go. Okay, now try it. See if the chat works. Cool. Perfect. Thank you for letting me know that the chat was disabled. That is so helpful. All right, we have about three minutes till we get started. We have people from all over. There's a Jamaica. Thanks for joining, Peter. All right, we have about two minutes till we get started. I'm going to go off screen until then, and I will see you guys in exactly two minutes when we start.
One more minute till we get started, everyone. Again, thank you for joining early. We'll talk to you soon. All right, it's exactly 11 o'clock Pacific. Um, if my hosts are going to open up their cameras now, go ahead. Otherwise, I will just get started with the intro. There they are, lovely faces. Hey guys. Hey Alexa. All right. So so thanks for joining today's webinar where we're gonna cover into or we'll dive into the best practices for domain security. We have our security experts, Pooja and Mike, who will cover all the info today. This webinar is pre-recorded and we will be holding a live Q&A session once the presentation is done. So if you have any questions, please input them in the Q&A section. This webinar will be recorded and posted on our GoDaddy Pro events page under past events and the GoDaddy YouTube channel. So in case you need to drop early, no worries, you can catch the full late recording later. I'll post the links to both of those pages in the chat. And with that, we'll get into the webinar. Take it away, Mike. Hi there and welcome. Thanks for joining into GoDaddy's Domain Security Webinar Series. This is part two of our three-part series. Many companies, unfortunately, don't address domain security until... Oh, Mike. Okay. So just if you pause the video real quick. Some of those companies. Okay. So sorry for the technical difficulties, everyone. Um, Mike, I'm just going to walk you through this real quick. If you click more and then go into audio, it, it, there should be an option that says stereo. There we go. I got it. <clears throat> cool. All right. If you just want to start the recording over, thanks for hanging in there, you guys. We got this and don't forget, we'll do a live Q&A at the end of the recording. So if you guys have any questions at all, please enter them into the Q&A section. Um, Mike, Pooja, and we have a couple other people that will join us for Q&A. We'll answer any questions that you have at the end. All right, go ahead and take it away, Mike. Hi there and welcome. Thanks for joining into GoDaddy's Domain Security Webinar Series. This is part two of our three-part series. Many companies, unfortunately, don't address domain security until it's too late, sometimes resulting in downtime for their website or email, and that makes it impossible for their customers to reach them. It even ends up costing some of those companies millions in lost revenue. Now, I wish this wasn't the case, but the problem is widespread. A 2021 survey from New Star International Security Council found that 72% of organizations had experienced a DNS attack within the last 12 months. So today isn't about just telling scary stories, but it is important to understand that what can happen if we're not mindful of the security risks, and it allows us to collaborate, make sure your business stays running smoothly. As the largest registrar, and the largest registrar for businesses like yours in particular, we're super focused on making sure we, we're doing all that we can to educate our customers and develop solutions to help. At GoDaddy, we've built a tremendous team of the industry's top experts in domain security, and we're sharing some of their most important knowledge to help you mitigate security risks for your business. Now, part one of the series, which is linked in the description below, focused on securing the website and highlighted the importance of finding the right SSL certificate to protect your site. Today's webinar will emphasize how to secure your online presence with a focus on the root of it all, the domain name allowing you to prioritize running your business. I'm Mike Roeder. I'm an account manager on the business care team here at GoDaddy, 
and we serve enterprise customers with large domain portfolios. And we'll be joined by Pooja Shah, GoDaddy's Senior Product Manager for Domain Security. We'll cover why domain security is important, what happens when your domain is not secure, and how domain security works in practice. We'll also share some tips and tricks on how to keep your domain secure with a few simple steps. Finally, Pooja will talk about a few of the products that GoDaddy, GoDaddy offers to help you out with that. We'll finish up with some live Q&A, so please submit your questions about domain security, and we'll answer as many of the questions as we can. You can submit the questions by typing them into the Q&A section of the webinar. We hope that you walk away with confidence knowing on how to keep your domain safe so that you can focus on the most important thing, making your business successful. All right, with that, let's dive in. Pooja? Thanks, Michael, for introducing me. I'm excited to join you in this webinar and answer those important questions. As you would agree that in today's digital age, it is more important than ever to ensure the security of your domain name. Simply put, a domain name is the address of your website and is a crucial part of your online identity. If your domain name is not secure correctly, it can leave you vulnerable to cyber threats and other attacks. We will talk about how not securing your domain name can cause various kinds of problems. But before we do that, let's first understand who can benefit from learning about domain security. I would like to share my screen. Let me know if you're able to share, if you're able to see my screen. Yeah, Pooja, I can see your screen. Great. So you may fall into one of the following categories. For large corporations, domain security is critical for maintaining the trust and reputation of the company. By implementing strong domain security measures, corporate companies can protect their online assets and ensure that cyber threats do not compromise their domain names and impact their businesses. You could be a small business owner, just like the two sisters who own the furlough cheesecake shop. If you are a small business owner with a website, your business must remain online and accessible to customers 24 seven. Without proper domain security, you risk losing the control of your domain name, which can have severe consequences for your business. If you work in the web design, development, or other related fields, understanding the importance of domain security is crucial for your clients. By learning about different types of domain security measures, you can help your clients protect their domains and ensure the security of their online presence. Lastly, if you are a domain investor or an investor into other online assets, you should protect your investments. By learning to secure your domains and protect them from potential threats, you can minimize your risks and maximize your investment returns. This webinar is designed for large corporation customers as most of you joining us today fall into that category. But just in case, if you have a side hustle going on, the content of this webinar is equally useful for those scenarios as well. Of course, we can't have conversation about domain security without first understanding why domain security matters. So imagine waking up one day to find that your website and email no longer belongs to you or are displaying malicious content all because someone else was able to gain access to your domain. It's a scary thought, but it is reality for many people who don't take necessary precautions to protect their online identity. Often you hear about incidents when website has been redirected to a different site that is showing malicious content or has been taken down completely and the customers are having problem accessing their accounts. By and large, the issues we deal with aren't with the strangers accessing the things, but folks who used to have trusted access, like fired employees, former business partners, former friends or spouses. 
Besides this, there are scenarios when authorized users take unintended actions, such as accidentally deleting domains or pushing through transfers that were not intended. There are chances that you may lose your domain for good if your credit card expired and it failed to renew your domain or you had auto renew off. In 2022, Approximately 780,000 customers redeemed their domain by paying additional price. So there are a lot of possibilities that can cost you big bucks if your domain name is not secure. Yeah, Pooja, those are things that I see on a daily and weekly basis working with enterprise customers here. Uh, a lot of times dealing with just company turnover uh, within the company, people changing out who manages the account. Uh, even the ever-changing credit card carousel uh, for updates there and keeping updated contact information on the account in case of those failed billings. Um, are those the only part of domain security that we focus on? That's a great question you asked, Mike. Domain security is not just about protecting your domain. It's also about protecting your privacy. It is crucial to know the difference between protection and privacy. Although they are related, they are very, they are two very distinct concepts. So let me talk about privacy. Let me share what privacy is about. So domain privacy is a service that helps to protect the personal information of a domain name registrant from being made publicly available in the who is. If you're new to domain world, you might not be familiar with the who is. Very quickly, when a domain name is registered, the registrant's personal information, such as their name, address, phone number, email, is typically made available in a public database called the WHOIS. WHOIS is often used for various purposes, including checking the availability of the domain, determining who owns the domain, and finding the contact information of the domain owner. All registrars, are required to provide this service. However, spammers often abuse this service to send unwanted emails and solicitations. So coming back to domain privacy, domain privacy is often offered as an optional service when registering a new domain name. It can be helpful for anyone who want to keep their personal information private. However, it is important to note that domain privacy does not provide any additional security for the domain itself and does not protect against hijacking or other type of cyber attacks. It simply works by hiding the domain registration's per registrant's personal information and replacing it with the contact information of the domain privacy service provider. GoDaddy has its privacy service provider called Domains by Proxy that offers this service at no charge. Let's take a look at an example of how that works. So when a domain privacy is turned off, the domain name registrant's personal information is publicly available in the WHOIS, as I shared earlier. In this case, you can see John Smith is the registrant who lives in Tempe, Arizona. His contact information, like phone number and email, is publicly available. So anyone can call, can reach out to him. On the other hand, when the, the domain privacy is turned off, the personal information is replaced in the WHOIS records with the contact information of the privacy service provider. As you see here on the right, the, the service provider is domains by proxy. You see the value of the name field now shows registration private. The address has been replaced by the company address of domains by proxy service provider. Similarly, other values for phone number and email are also replaced. This makes it more difficult for scammers or others to access the registrant's personal information. Okay, so domain privacy secures your information from scammers and hiding the registrant's personal info off the who is. But in my department, I deal with a lot of the enterprise customers that uh, are buying and selling domain names. So is there a way to protect the registrant's information 
and still have legitimate parties like domain buyers and sellers or legal entities reach out to these registrants? That's a great question. Uh, absolutely, we have a really good process set in place for this. Right. If, a, if someone want to get in touch with the domain owner, they can submit a form online with their name, email address, and the reason for contacting the domain owner. This form will be that will be sent to registrant's email address. It is up to the registrant to decide whether or not they want to respond to that request. This process ensures that registrant controls who can access their personal information, even if the domain privacy is turned on. While enabling privacy can protect your personal information, I want to emphasize that it does not necessarily ensure the security or safety of the domain itself. There are other measures you can take to help protect your domain and keep it safe. Okay. So that encompasses domain privacy. Earlier, you mentioned another concept of domain protection. Can you tell us a little bit more about that concept? Absolutely. So domain protection is all about protecting the domain itself. Without domain protection, you are vulnerable to cyber criminals who could transfer your domain to a different registrar, hack into your website or email. Domain protection alerts domain owners on several such high-risk actions. It also protects domain from being lost due to billing failures or credit card expiration. There are multiple protection plans available depending on the need. It's important to note that availability and features of the domain protection plans may vary depending on the region your domain is registered and the specific extension of your domain. Here is an example of how domain protection works. Picture this. Someone has gained access to your account and they're trying to delete all the important domains from, the, from your account. But wait, as you see here, both the domains have protection plans on it. One of them has privacy, the other doesn't. What would happen is when they try to delete these domains, they won't be able to do it without your permission. They'll need to enter a one-time passcode, which will be sent to your email or phone. Without the right passcode, they won't be able to proceed at all. So with this example, it should help you to understand the difference that privacy is all the related privacy to protect to protecting to your domain, but privacy and protection are two separate concepts. Also, having domain protection gives you peace of mind knowing that your online presence is secure. It could be any high risk change, whether it's deleting a domain or transferring the domain without your permission or removing the protection plan at, from your domain itself. With this, we'll now dive into the last leg of this webinar, where I would like to go over some tips on how to improve the domain security. There are several steps you can take to help keep your domain name safe and secure. Starting with the basic, use complex, unique passwords for all your domain accounts. Many registrars offer two-factor authentication as an extra layer of security. This requires you to enter one-time code in addition to your password when logging into your account. Keep your domain registration and hosting accounts up to date. The registration name listed, the registrant name listed in the who is is considered as the owner of the domain name. So if the registrant name needs to be corrected, it could create confusion about who owns the domain name. If there is a dispute over the ownership of the domain name, the registrant name listed in the who is may be used as an evidence in the legal proceedings. Incorrect registrant name could also make it easier for someone to gain access to your domain name, and they could easily take any high-risk action. Moreover, if the registrant name is not consistent with the brand or business associated with the domain name, it could create confusion for users 
and damage the business's reputation. So it is essential to keep your domain registration and hosting accounts up to date. Consider purchasing domain protection services. We saw the benefits of having one earlier. Evaluate if it is in your interest to enable the privacy settings. Regularly review the security settings for your domain and update them as needed to help prevent unauthorized access. Use proper certificates as they encrypt communication between the website and its visitors, helping to prevent eavesdropping and man-in-the-middle attacks. This is covered in detail in the previous webinar. A firewall can help protect your website from external threats by monitoring incoming and outgoing network, net, network traffic and blocking suspicious activities. Keep DNS records name servers up to date. DNS is a big topic in itself, but at the high level, DNS records are used to map domain name to IP addresses, and name servers are used to resolve those domain names to those IP addresses. It is important to keep these records accurate and up to date to ensure that traffic is directed to the correct location and use reliable and secure name servers to ensure that your domain name is properly resolved. DNSSEC is a set of extension to DNS protocol that provides additional security to prevent spoofing, tampering, and other types of attacks. Implementing DNSSEC can help protect your domain name from these type of threats. In addition to these measures, you should be aware of phishing scams and other types of online threats that could target your domain. Be cautious about clicking on links or downloading attachments from unfamiliar sources and consider using reputable security tool to protect your domain from viruses and other malware. By taking these precautions and being vigilant about security of your domain, you can help protect it from being hijacked or stolen. With this, Mike, I'll hand it back to you. Thanks so much for that, Pooja. And thank you again for listening and joining in today. So much to learn about how to better protect us. And as we know, the risk is never zero, but these are some of the great best practices to help us out along the way. So with that, we're gonna kick off into the live Q&A. We've got a couple of questions here prepared for you. Uh, please, please feel free at this time to also uh, add any additional questions into the Q&A section of the webinar. Uh, on any of the topics that we have discussed here today. Uh, you can type those in in the Q&A section there. We'll pick a few of these top questions uh, and a couple of the prepared ones, and we'll have Pooja help answer those here. Going, let's bring those up. All right, first one that we have here, Pooja, are you, uh, we've got Carla, can privacy be turned on in bulk for large portfolios? Yes, we can turn on privacy for multiple domains together uh, through portfolio. We recently um, have made an update to our existing feature, and you should be able to do that through the portfolio uh, view. Perfect. Um, we have a, another question here outside of the Q&A. Uh, just did want to go over some of the different options that GoDaddy does provide. So would you be able to go over the options that we do provide for domain protection? Sure. Yeah, so we provide three type of domain protection plans. Um, we have full protection, which basically prevent any unauthorized changes uh, for any high-risk actions that we saw earlier. Um, then there is ultimate protection plan, um, which gives you benefits of full protection plus uh, protect you from losing your domain due to billing failures. Uh, we hold on to your domain for 90 days 
and um, after your 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 credit card has expired, um, and that gives you opportunity to renew that domain manually. Um, what we do is behind the scenes we turn on the auto renew. Um, you know, in case if it was off, and um, that's another thing that would happen. Uh, but in parallel, you get those ninety day period to not lose your domain, we retain it for you. And then the third protection plan is domain ownership protection. This applies to those domains that are not eligible to get privacy. Um, uh, so for those, for those domains or, or for those TLDs, they can uh, use domain ownership protection plan uh, and get all the benefits same as what we get in the ultimate protection plan. All of these plans have been described and are available on our website as well, in case if you would like to refer to, the, to them again. Perfect, thanks Pooja. Uh, we got one from the Q&A board here. It says, you talked about registrant name info. What is the best practice when using a name for a large corporation where a single person doesn't really own the domain, the corporation does? Great question. Sure. So it is essential to uh, to use the the name of the company or the corporation, um, but they do ask for the contact information of an individual as well, and it is very important to provide the correct information in that case. Um, you can always, there are ways to always update that if the individual has left the company, um, but of course this needs to be consistent and kept up to date. Um, based on the you know the change of the the requirement or whatever you may need to do. Um, Anand, would you like to add anything else to that? No, you covered it, Pooja. You're right that when you register a domain, uh, you can specify it belongs to a business or organization, uh, but the registrant typically needs to be a person that we can reach out to. So. You just have to make sure that either it's the owner of the business or, or someone who has access to the domain. Uh, and yes, if, if they transition out of the company, make sure you update it on time. To keep your domain secure. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks. All right. Next one here. I have purchased a bunch of domains and certificates. How do we know they are secured? Sorry, could you could you say that again, Mike? Sure. I... All right, I have purchased a bunch of domains and certificates. How do we know they are secured? For domains particularly, you could see if whether or not you have domain protection plan on that. Uh, that's the one uh, for domains itself. Um, and certificates, I you would want to review the the information uh, that is covered in the previous webinar that's been covered by the SME for that particular area and you would get the most out of it. Yeah, thank you. And that the SSL portion was in the previous webinar that's uh, you know more focused on the actual website connection uh, with the SSL certificates. Uh, and I can post the, sorry, Mike, I'll post the link to that webinar in the chat in case anyone wants to pull that and watch it. Great. Thanks, Alexa. All right. We got another one here. I was under the impression that GDPR hid who is information to the general public. Is that not a true statement? And if so, exactly where might the, that information still be exposed that the privacy setting will additionally help in preventing that information from being seen? If I'm understanding this right, I believe we're talking about Nominet, um, who, who um, has different rules than what our standard who is um, offers. Um, what you can do is for those domains, um, you can go to our privacy email settings option that is available in the domain settings page, and you can review them. Uh, you can review those settings there and enable or disable as per your need. Perfect, thank you. 
All right, next one up is a question. Does GoDaddy offer a firewall service? So GoDaddy does offer firewall service. Uh, it is part of our website security tools. Those are going to be incorporated within malware uh, prevention and also removal. Uh, so we have website security services and tools that are associated specifically uh, and focused more on the actual content of your website and less focused on the domain protection of control of the actual domain name itself. Let's see, Pooja, we should have another one here for you. What is the best method for extending the SSL certificate validation validity date? Do we revoke and renew the SSL cert, or is this another way without affecting production? Thanks. So that was, I believe, most likely covered in the SSL portion of the previous webinar and less in uh, this one. So Alexa did post the webinar link on SSLs in that. Uh, if that does not help answer that question uh, that we had posted there, John, or uh, it looks like anonymous, um, then feel free to give us a call so we can go over the uh, nuances of the validity and expiration dates on those cycles for SSLs. Let's see, we did have... All right, so we got one more here. For a website design and hosting agency, where we have client transfer their domain name into our corporate account, whose owner information should be placed on the domain, the original client or the agency contact? The recipient of the domain, the account in which the domain has been transferred to, um, that would, the, the person associated with that account uh, should be listed as the owner of that domain. Perfect. All right. So we've got another one coming in here. How can we prevent customers that we sell the domain to from attempting to reset our corporation's credentials? Assume that has to do with the domain contact information once it's moved from one account to another. That is correct. Um, if you've already sold the domain, uh, the Information in the who is needs to be updated, uh, who owns that domain. Um, and that should help you with this. Perfect. We got a couple other questions here. I uh, just want to cover one thing here on eligibility for domain privacy. Uh, are all domain names eligible to add domain privacy? Um, most of them are, but there are a few TLDs uh, that will not support the standard domain privacy, but they are eligible to get domain protection. Um, and the list of those TLDs are available on our um, help article. We can share that as well in the link here. Perfect. Uh, Follow-up question, looks like it was from on the last one or the previous one that we answered, it says, uh, we have domains that customers use, but we admin the DNS. They attempt to log in and reset our credentials. So that focuses more on the so go to any account itself, it seems like that question. Wait, if you have domain protection on your domain, it will just like that example that we saw earlier somebody trying to delete the domain and then it requires you to enter that one-time passcode. Um, this kind of, this uh, particular um, action that you just mentioned, mentioned about changing information in DNS or related to DNS, um, all of those fall into high-risk action and for all of them, they'll need to enter that one-time passcode. Um, so through domain ownership protection, you can prevent them changing any of that, that information. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and then one of the situations that that popped up uh, that we run into on my department here uh, with the domain business care team is uh, similar to what the question was. They do have, we, we manage a lot of marketing teams as well, and their domain names that people believe that they own, they try to contact in 
and fill out different uh, change update forms and whatnot, uh, showing that they own the domain name itself, but it's in one of those marketing firms accounts. Um, so that is a, a separate item, essentially from domain protection, more than just the ability to, to fill out some of those change update forms and things like that to gain access to the account. Um, so it would, domain protection would obviously prevent from any removal of those domain names from your account. Uh, but those are uh, things that when we get phone calls in or inbound gets phone calls in uh, that we do, we're not allowed to give out information uh, on who's owning the domain name. And that's why some of those, um, you know, they would be clients of, of yours would have to, would then be directed to fill out information uh, to get that either access to the account or domain, but typically that doesn't happen uh, in, in order to gain access to, to your account. So uh, another one here, pricing uh, for domain protection. Uh, the question is, where is pricing listed for the domain protection that we offer? That is available on our website for both, for all the plans that I described earlier. Perfect. Uh, is there anything that can be done within a hosting account that can help with domain protection, such as a WordPress plugin? Great question. So domain protection is a specific product related only for domain itself uh, that does not apply to WordPress product that you would um, add or start using. Yeah, so domain protection would be focused specifically on uh, the ownership of that domain name, not the, the website portion of, of the WordPress or whatever tools are used to build the actual website. All right, and then uh, we did have the question about will the slides be available uh, from the presentation, Pooja? We'll be able to- I can answer that one. I can answer Perfect. that one. So the um, recording will be available on the GoDaddy events page as well as our YouTube page. So um, if you just go to GoDaddy YouTube, you can play back um, this recording and see all the slides. Awesome, thanks Alexa. And I have one final question here. Uh, can customers change their domain protection from their accounts? They can change their protection plan anytime they can either upgrade or downgrade um, depending on what they need. And there's upgrade downgrade options that are available uh, in the domain settings tab when you're in a domain name. Yes. So if in case, sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Uh, but yes, if you don't have any protection, you can get it anytime um, through either through portfolio or through domain settings page. Uh, you can simply click on add protection and get one. If you have a full protection plan and you want to upgrade to ultimate protection, you can always do that anytime in case if you have ultimate protection and you want to downgrade to full or no protection. Again, that's that can be done anytime. Thanks, Pooja. All right. So we don't have any more questions here. So uh, that's all the time that we have. Thank you so much for everybody. Uh, who's watched, as well as the ones who have asked questions here. All of us here at GoDaddy are looking forward to help you and keep your domain secure with our industry-leading tools. So please check out GoDaddy.com to learn more about what we offer for you and your website. Thanks again for joining us. Keep your eye out for our final webinar series. That'll be coming soon. Thanks. Thanks, everyone.